Hello, and welcome to the Ukrainian History and Education Center Library Gallery here in Somerset, New Jersey. My name is Michael Andrick, and although my official job title is archivist, I'm actually here today in my role as curator of the exhibition Visible Music, the Art of Yuhim Mikhailiv. Yuhim Mikhailiv is certainly one of the most undeservedly obscure Ukrainian artists of the beginning of the 20th century. He was a symbolist at a time when symbolism was already going out of fashion, and his untimely death during the Stalin terror certainly contributed to his not being very well known in Ukraine. This exhibition is the first major presentation of Mikhailiv's art in over 30 years. Some of the works are being displayed for the first time in, since the early 1960s, and a few are actually being publicly exhibited for the first time ever, as far as we know. The symbolists from turn of the 20th century Russian Empire wanted to get away from naturalism. And they thought that art should try to get at deeper truths, truths that can only be depicted through metaphor and suggestion. Mikhailiv was especially interested in depicting the intangible and the invisible, things like history and music. He wasn't a musician himself, but he certainly had a deep appreciation of music. And there are many allusions to music in the titles that he chose for his works. In fact, music may literally have been something that was visible for him. That's actually, there's actually good evidence to believe that he was an auditory visual synesthete. In other words, his brain would literally perceive sounds as colors or shapes. Mikhailiv was born in the city of Oleshke in southern Ukraine. He displayed an obvious artistic talent as a child and the local government awarded him a scholarship in 1902 so that he could travel to Moscow to study art and design. He eventually graduated from the Moscow School of Painting, Sculpture, and Architecture, where he studied under Valentin Serov and Sergei Korovin. During the 1917 revolution, he and his family relocated from Moscow to Ukraine, where he would spend most of the rest of his life. Mikhailiv had an abiding love of Ukraine, but his depictions of Ukrainianness were totally different from those of his predecessors. He completely rejected the then popular genre scenes of happy peasants and embroidered costumes, but instead he reached back into much deeper layers of Ukrainian history and culture, like the past glories of the Kiev and Rus and the Cossack state, or the steppe and the stone babas that were put on top of grave mounds by prehistoric nomads. He used these themes to create imagined landscapes with sometimes strange metaphorical juxtapositions. His first really big symbolist treatment of Ukrainian history was in his Ukrainian Sonata Triptych of 1916. At first glance, these works seem to have very little to do with Ukraine, but they actually can be read as a metaphor for the reemergence of a Ukrainian historical memory from the nearly forgotten gravestones of ancestors that seem to be sinking underneath a sea of mysterious horizontal lines, to the materialization of the past as a ghostly spectral figure. Finally, all those horizontal lines start swirling upwards, and it's as if a new spirit of Ukraine has awoken and is looking into the future. Mikhailiv was very strongly influenced by the Lithuanian symbolist artist Mikolaius Churlionis. We know that he saw Churlionis' works at a major exhibition in Moscow not too long before he painted the Ukrainian Sonata. And some of the elements in his triptych are direct references to elements in Churlionis' 1909 painting Lithuanian Graveyard. Unlike his Russian symbolist contemporary Nicholas Rorik, Mikhailiv remained in the Soviet Union after the revolution. He was active in the Ukrainian Renaissance of the 1920s, and the Mikhailiv family home became a sort of a salon for the Kyiv literary and intellectual scene. In 1924, the Mikhailiv's only child, their eight-year-old son, Yurasik, suddenly died of diphtheria. Then two years later, their daughter, Tetyana, was born. These two momentous life events led to the creation of the Moonlight Sonata Triptych of 1927, which is certainly one of his most complex works. Like a piano sonata, it doesn't really tell any concrete story. Instead, it's an exploration of the joys, fears, and fragility of childhood, and is a meditation on the earthly and transient versus the stable and the eternal. 
Mikhailiv taught art at several institutions in central Ukraine, and he even had leadership roles in official organizations like the Association of Artists of Red Ukraine. But by the early 1930s, it was becoming clear that things were not going to end well for him. In many ways, his art was the diametric opposite of socialist realism. He started getting attacked in the press, and he was finally arrested in May 1934 on the absolutely preposterous charge of organizing an armed uprising. He was exiled to the city of Kotlas in the Russian Arctic, where he ended up contracting malaria. He also probably suffered from esophageal cancer, but he was denied treatment by the authorities. He died in July 1935, just a few months shy of his 50th birthday. Although Mikhailiv didn't survive the Stalin terror, his major artworks did, thanks to the heroic efforts of his wife Hanna and daughter Tatyana. They took more than 70 works with them when they left Kyiv in 1943, and they literally hand-carried them for part of their journey. They eventually ended up in the Somme Kaserne displaced persons camp near Augsburg, Germany, and in 1949, they came as refugees to the United States. Most of these works remained with Hanna and then with Tatyana and her husband, George Chaplenko, here in New Jersey. They finally became part of the UHEC permanent collection through a bequest from George Chaplenko in 2006. Unfortunately, Mikhailiv's idiosyncratic works never really caught on, and they mostly slipped into obscurity. However, they remain a document of a unique period in Ukrainian history. His work has attracted increasing attention in post-independence Ukraine. He was the subject of an international conference in 1997, and a monograph and catalogue raisonné was published in 2003. Thank you for watching this virtual tour of the exhibition Visible Music, The Art of Yuhim Mikhailiv, and we hope that it helps to build awareness about this fascinating and underappreciated artist.